creating connections in your relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this one is, is funny because I have a lot of people that will ask me about um, trying to increase the connection, the intimacy inside of their relationship. And it usually comes down to one factor on why people aren't able to make that shift. And it's usually dealing with your ego and your pride. And you know that thing that we're talking about, wanting to be right. Um, this is one of the things, like I tell people, even with anger, people go, where does anger come from? I say, it comes from wanting to be right. If you stop having to be right, you will watch anger disappear from your life. It's the same thing with um, what we're doing here when we're talking about creating the connection in your relationship. When you get out of having to be right, you will watch the connections in your relationship work. Um, you guys know I've always talked about, um, you know, that there's two keys to relationships. One, accepting people as they are which to me is what love is. And then of course the second is communication. And you've heard me say that, you know, normally when I say that people instantly say, well, communication is most important. And I say, well, if I don't accept you as you are, where does communication lie? And they go, ooh, that's instant conflict, exactly. But here's the key. If I accept you as you are, I didn't say agree. I said accept you as you are, which means it is what it is then the communication becomes differently because now I approach the conversation basically saying, I want to understand where you're coming from. You guys follow me? That's, that's where, um, like I said, accepting them as they are and then communication. Communication is different. Think about that. Doesn't, that. doesn't that make it instantly when you even hear that? You're like, wow. That would make communication a lot simpler if I accepted that person as they are, then I'm not in the trying to be right conversation. I'm in the trying to understand where you're coming from. How did you get to that way of thinking? And guess what? That will, that will cause the connections to be that much greater. And that will also create, you guys know I've talked about uh, intimacy. And intimacy comes from, uh, I've used the analogy of an iceberg. An iceberg shows you 10% of, of what it is, and the other 90% is, on, is underwater. And it's the same thing in our relationships. We're only going to show 10% of who we are because almost all of our relationships are going to be surface level, which means they're only going to get enough information to make the relationship work. The 90% goes to those people that we start to connect to. That intimacy is the information that they're allowed to get that's under the water. They're allowed to come in closer to you, get a closer view to you and your life than anyone else is allowed to do, uh, uh, to be a part of. And that's also why those are the people that can hurt you the most. Why? Because they know the most. They know your intimacy. They know the things that, that, that where you hurt. They know your pains. And if they use those things against you, then that's the reason betrayal becomes real. So, but anyway, the connecting part, back to that. The way we're going to build this connection is first off, again, accept them as they are, and then let's communicate. And the communication, the major part there, and you guys have heard me talk about that before, is you have to build a safe place. The safe place means somewhere where we can go and talk. I can be open. I can share what's on my mind, what's on my heart. I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be tore down. You're there to understand. And again, I didn't say agree. Understand where I'm coming from. And that's not to say you wouldn't have input or, and, and of course, sometimes we don't need input. Sometimes, and this is where the connection gets better, sometimes we got to learn, is the person sharing with us because they want um, us to 
give our advice, share our input, or are they just trying to get stuff off of their chest? You got to know the difference. And because um, I remember I had a cousin call me one time and they were like, yeah, well, you know, the reason I'm calling you is because I knew I had to talk to my cousin that, that that's going to be straightforward and going to tell me just how, how he feels. He's not going to hold anything back. But see, there I had to be clear. So do you want my view, my perspective, or do you want to just get stuff off your chest? See, folks, that's clarity because I'm letting you know. Because here's the key. A lot of people will say, I want you to tell me the truth. And then when you tell them the truth, their feelings are hurt. And that's why people will tell you what, you know, like, and, you, and we know, and because and, I don't get into the male-female conversations, as you guys know, but they'll say, well, women will tell you one thing. They'll ask you one thing. And then, but she really doesn't want you to tell her the truth. Like she'll say, do I look fat in this? And she wants you to tell her flattery things and make her feel good about it. But at the same time, telling you, tell me the truth. And if you don't think that, then lie to her. And people will tell you that. And go, that was so mean of you to, to, to tell her that. There's a way to say it. Not, you don't necessarily say, well, yeah, you look fat. But you know, you may just tell her, you know what? I think that maybe you should put on something different. That outfit doesn't really go well on you, I don't think. And I mean... Folks, don't dig if somebody tells <laughs> you. Ah, ladies, don't say, what does that mean? Don't start getting the man to dig because you, you, you're going to eventually get that word where he may come out and say, were well, you too big for that or that's too small for you or something. And then your feelings going to get hurt. Be careful when you ask people to be honest with you because if they do, don't get your feelings hurt. But... You need to have that in your relationships. You need to have that safe place because even if a person told you that and they said I was fat and they didn't say it because they were trying to offend you. And, and again, to me, I don't use the word fat because for a lot of people that is offensive. And that's why, again, you guys have to know your partner. Does fat offend them? Or is fat, what, what, what word they would use, they'd be like, man, I'm, I am, I'm fat, I'm overweight, I'm just, and you just go, you know what? We could both get healthier. Use the words that work for your relationship. I'm not telling you what words to say, maybe, but don't lie because <laughs> then I can't trust you anymore because I know you sitting there. I got, I got, I got belly sticking all out everywhere. And you talking about, oh no, that, that fits good on you. You lying. I know you lying, but anyway, uh, but the connection part is you got to be able to have that safe place where we can come and share. And ladies, I've said this before. Do not tell your man that you want a guy that's going to be open with you. You want him to share with you. You want him to be vulnerable. And then when he does, you call him a wimp or you treat him like he's uh, weak or because I'm telling you, the moment you do that is the moment he will shut down and you will no longer, his vulnerability will disappear. He will no longer share with you anymore. And I share this all the time because I believe it. Those guys that are running around trying to play the macho role, those guys that, that feel like being vulnerable is a weakness, you can never, ever have the best relationship with your partner if you can't be vulnerable. Because every human being has doubts. Every human being questions himself. Every human being has cried and is going to cry. And if I can't come to the person who is supposed to be my ride or die, as people call it, or my, my, my teammate or my spouse or the person that, that I'm supposed to be able to trust, if I can't come to you with, the, with, with the, the biggest challenges in my life, how do we have a great relationship? It's not possible. Because that means the things that are most important to me, I have to go somewhere else to get those things handled. And I'm really kind of sharing this with ladies, so be careful when you when you tell your guy that because you want to be, and I know for some of you, you're, you're scared of that because you're like, well, I'm looking for him to be this big, strong guy, and if he comes to me, it's going to make me nervous. That's what teamwork is all about. We're in this together. But you gotta, he's got to know that he can come to you. 
and share with you his fears, his doubts, his, the stories that he's written, and, and you can help him get back on track. And the same thing, ladies, you got to be able to know that you can go to him and tell him what's going on. And fellas, and I'm saying this in general because, you know, I, again, I don't get it to the male-female. It works both ways. But usually it is guys who have the hearing issues. If she's telling you how she's feeling, listen. Don't come from your... See, that's why you hear the saying about you got to get in other people's shoes um, to understand where they're coming from. You can't sit there like if a lady is telling you that I'm scared about something and you can't all of a sudden go, well, I'm here. I got you. You ain't got no reason to be scared. You got to hear her out. Why is she scared? What is going on? Listen to her. We got to be able to do that. We got to have that place, that, 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 that safe zone where the partner can come in and just be open and share. That's how we're going to create this connection that we're talking about. That's how you create the intimate relationship that other people look and they envy it and, and they're wondering how you got there. But folks, trust me, there's going to be some, 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 some challenging times when you do that because there are going to be some tears and, and you're going to have guys break it down that, that, that feel they're not supposed to because the world has told them that men don't. But some of that's going to come into play. And, and uh, ladies, be there to help him through those times versus, again, making him feel weak. Uh, be there. And, and I mean, because I don't know. And I mean, we call this male-female thing. And again, I don't get into all that. They go, well, you're, uh, you're let your femininity and, and your, uh, your masculinity. I don't get into all that stuff. I, people made that up. Um, because basically the way our society kind of looks at it is anything that has to deal with emotions. That if you show emotions and you're vulnerable, we call that feminine. Anything that's weak, we call that feminine. Something's wrong with that. That we, we want to look at... Uh, a feminine as a weak thing to do. The fact that you share your innermost feelings like like that's something wrong, there's something bad with that. And the masculine is the strong and you know, that's all we look at it. So, and it's like the ones that don't have any feelings, no emotions, that's masculine. No, that's not. That's a person who's hiding from the fact that they're a human being. Emotions are a part of being a human being. Again, that's when we get into the conversation where people say, well, women are more in touch with their emotions. The reason is because the day that, they're, that, that you're born, women are told they can be emotional and guys are told they can't. It's not that, that, that guys aren't emotional creatures. They have been told they can't show them, so therefore they grow up from the time that they little. Because every little boy I have ever seen in my life cries. I've never seen one that didn't. But they're taught immediately boys don't cry. Be a big boy. Be a man. So when we turn around and talk about men not being in touch with their emotions, it's taught for them not to be in touch with their emotions. And young ladies are taught just the opposite. They're given dolls to play with and that kind of stuff, and they're taught that. So that's where the disconnect comes. I don't buy into all the other stuff that people want to be. We're being programmed from the day you born. Women, you're emotional creatures. Men, you're not. And we know that's not true. They are. They're just told they can't show it because it equals weakness. But anyway, bottom line, in order for us to get this connection thing going, we need to get past the, the, the male, female, macho, feminine, femininity, and all, all these other conversations that people want to throw out there and just say, start being a human being. That's it. Be a human being. Have a safe place where you and your partner can come and talk it out. And that gets to the, uh, the roles where people are talking about the male does this. All that stuff is all programming. You do what works for your relationship. If he's the cook, get her out of the kitchen. If she's the breadwinner girl, you go do your thing. And, and husband, you cheer her on. Quit listening to people trying to tell you what works. Because most of the people that are sharing that with you have never been in a relationship that worked. They got good advice but they've never actually been out there and done it themselves. So anyway, get better at the, the safe zone, connecting, communicating. Get pride and ego out of the way because that's going to be the stumbling block for most people. Uh, that wanting to be right, get that out of your life of having to be right. You'll watch anger disappear. 
You'll also watch your connections uh, increase and intimacy will walk into your relationships. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. See the things that I got going on. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Folks, work on your connection with your partner, the intimacy, the safe zone, because life is too short to live it any other way. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.